Lefty Ayers. Kamusta kayo? <laughs> Ay, Tiyes, laban pa? Laban pa. Laban pa. Kagraduate tayo. Iwala lang. Students, welcome to STI Noble Chess Campus Devcon. I am Neil. And this is Arthur. And, and we, we are your host for this event. event. We are delighted to have you here, especially those who are taking their ITS, SoftWen, and SadSign right now. I'm sure that you're all doing well and you're making your projects right. And all the professors here with us. And we want to acknowledge the presence of, the, of our IT department head, Ms. Maricel Barameda. Let's give And with that, let us welcome our academic head, Mr. Don Bautista, to formally start the event. Let's give him a, a round, round of applause. applause. Kamusta kayo? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I love the balloons. <laughs> uh, seriously, welcome to DevCon. This is where you connect to the developers. So to all the IT students who are here and the CS also. Okay, nakita ko sa ano kasi nagaganoon pa. Please pay attention, you listen carefully, and you interact with our guest speakers later as they discuss you the um, current trends in the IT industry. Before we start, of course, I would like to acknowledge uh, because without the assistance of our dynamic team from the ITSA group headed by um, Rafael Marco, okay, and his team. And of course, with the assistance of Sir Jason Bercasio and the rest of the IT people, the IT team. And Mama Se. And I would like to say thank you also for, say, uh, for saying yes to our invitation, people from DevCon. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to STI. Okay, uh, let's start with this. But after you enjoy, as, as I have told you earlier, you interact with the speakers. Uh, okay, Mahia Magtanong. You would learn from them. And uh, after this, this would end at around 5 o'clock. Please attend your classes. And tomorrow, don't forget, at 8.30, be here for the SAP orientation. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Okay lang, ha? ha? Kamusta naman kayo? Ha? Ano pangalan mo? Neil, ikaw? Anong year mo na? Fourth year. Oh, fourth year. Ay, kala ko first year. Mabahal natin <laughs> And for that, thank you, Sir Don, for the opening remarks. And this campus... This campus DevCon event will be a series of topics about... Our first topic will be Angular State Management. Second, Web Development as a Career. Third, Fast Intro to ASP.NET. And Quick Introduction to Ethical Hacking. And after that, we'll proceed to the birds of a feather where we will have an informal debate on tech topics. But for now, let us all welcome Mr. Rajin Roy Raylio to introduce DevCon Philippines. Let's give him a round of applause. Hello. Hello. I'm Rajin Raylio, the event lead of ano, Campus DevCon in STI Novaliches. Then, first, I will introduce a video presentation about DevCon.
Welcome to STI Novelices Campus DevCon, and I will introduce the how, ano, about DevCon. What what is DevCon? DevCon is a volunteer organization promotes collaborative growth and global competence of Filipino developers. Provides venues for developers to sync, support, and succeed. Then, Dev, what does DevCon do? DevCon has code camps like iOS Code Camp, Angular JS Code Camp, Ruby on Rails Code Camp, and Android Android Code Camp and Unity Code Camp, and maram pa iba. Then, and Campus DevCon aims to rein reinforce the academic learnings of students with up-to-date trends in the IT industry. Eh, yung katulad ngayon, yung DevCon, nag-aano sila ngayon na campus, campus DevCon na nangyayari ngayon. Then, may mga maraming speakers na nagtuturo na like web development, ano, mobile app, at ano, about IT industry. Um, parts of Campus DevCon, Lightning Talks. 10 to 15 minutes tech related presentation including self introduction and Q&A. And gagawin nila mamaya yung ng mga speakers is i present nila yung topic nila then may 10 to 15 minutes kayong itatanong about dun sa inan nila topic. Then Birds of Feathers. Ayun, katulad ng sinabi kanina na merong it, meron akong itatanong mamaya then magde-debate kayo tapos ayun makakuha kayo ng prize mamaya kung sino yung mananalo. Tao. Java Code Cup Challenge. Ayan, di nakasama yan. Kasi, Geek Up. Meet Up and Workshop exclusive for DevCon volunteers and members. Ayan, di na rin kasama yan. And DevCon is free. Pwede kayong mag-register sa website ng De DevCon as a volunteer kung gusto nyo. Then, Meron kami ring DevCon Summit na darating sa November 17, I think. Then, ano, ayun, next. We have uh, chapters in na DevCon na Iloilo Edition, Davao Edition, CD Edition, and DevCon Summit 2017 nagagamnapin sa SMX, sa uh, SMR. What, what does DevCon can do? Code Camps, ayun nga, Campus DevCon, Geek, Geek Up, and DevCon Summit. May mga partners din yung DevCon, katulad na ayun. Philippine Android Developers Community, PNAG, or Philippine.net Users Group, Python Philippines, Philippine Ruby Users Group, Manila.js, Drupal Philippines, Philippine Web Designers Organization, or PWDO, VR Philippines, GDG Philippines, Amazon Web Services, Firefox, and PHP Users Group. De DevCon chapters. Ang, De ang DevCon, marami siyang chapters katulad ng Manila, Cebu, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, Iloilo, and Bacolod. Ayun Ayun nga, kung gusto nyo mag-apply as a volunteer or sa, ng local chapter katulad ng ibang region, mag-email lang kayo sa kay Antea at de devcon.ph. DevCon volunteers. Ayan. DevCon volunteers as logistics, marketing, technical, membership, office administration, and general. Then, ayan. ayan po yung DevCon volunteers. Tapos, next. Ayan. Ayan. Sign up and be a DevCon volunteers. Ayan. Pwede kayong magtanong sa akin mamaya or pumunta kayo sa website ng DevCon. Meron dong, ano module na para sa mga volunteers kung gusto nyo sumali. And free lang yun. Yes. Mamaya, may magbibigay ako ng price mamaya sa mga magpapost sa social media using a hashtag uh, DEFCON Philippines and hashtag DEFCON STI Novaliches Campus DEFCON. Meron din kaming social media. Ayun, nandiyan na nakikita nyo. Pwede kayo magpost sa Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram sa mga hashtags para mamaya sa prices. Ayun po. Thank you po. Ayan, so 
thank you, Sir Mr. Rodin Roy Reilio, for introducing us the DevCon Philippines. And now, our first speaker for this campus DevCon is a passionate full stop web developer who specializes in Angular and Laravel for API development, took BSIT and graduated as magna cum laude, and team lead and web developer at FFUF Manila. Let us welcome Mr. Steven Benuya. Let's give him a round of applause. Um, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction of me. And um, good afternoon, guys. Kamusta kayo? Okay naman. Okay. So just to give you another introduction of me again, um, para lang mas makilala natin sa tisa or makilala nyo lang ako. So, yun. So, my name is uh, Stephen Galang Pinuya. And Galang is my middle name. Lagi kong sinasama sa introduction ko yung middle name ko because um, I promote gender equality, no? And, syempre, yung middle name ko is from my mother's last name. Kaya, lagi ko siya sinasama. So, yun. And, currently, I'm a team lead at FFUF. So just to give you a little bit of background kung ano yung ginagawa ko as a team lead. So usually ang team lead is nagmamanage ako ng team. And ini-ensure ko na na-accomplish nila yung task nila and nagagawa nila yung work nila on time. So yun. Um, sabi nga niya, I graduated magna cum laude in National University. Um, di naman sa pagmamayabang pero um, ang bakit ako naging magna is not because magaling ako. It's because... I have wonderful professors na nagturo sa akin ng wonderful skills. So, might as well na give thanks to your professors sa mga na-accomplish niyong skills in your career. Okay? Um, second is, um, ano ba yung mga hobbies ko? Mahilig ako maglaro ng console games, especially Dota. So, kung sino mahilig mag-Dota rito, mamaya, ano, party tayo. So, yun. Um, mahilig ako manood ng anime. So, I consider myself as a full-time otaku. Sino rito yung mga otaku? Wala. Otakaw. Otakaw, meron? Marami, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yun. Um, if ever na-interested kayo, umatin din ako ng mga anime convention. So, baka magkakita tayo sa mga anime conventions in the near future, no? Um, ayun, and computer games. And... Back in my days, nung college ako is, ay sumasali ako sa mga programming competitions. And isa sa mga napanalunan kong competition is um, Accenture Program the Future, 2016, um, champion kami. And UMAC IT Olympics nung 2015, champion din kami. Okay? Um, apart from joining um, hackathons and programming competition, I also do talks like this one. So, yun, mahilig akong magbigay ng talks just to help Students like you, build your career. Okay? So, ayan. So, if ever na interested kayo to contact me or do another talk here at STI, ayan yung um, email and link in profile ko. So, ayan. So, to introduce you, our topic for this day, um, I'm going to have a little bit of introduction kung ano ba yung Angular State Management using services and RxJS. So, I guess yung, um, yung topic ko is a little bit um, irrelevant for you students kasi parang medyo advanced na to in part of Angular. Pero sino na ba nakarinig sa inyo ng Angular? Have heard of Angular? Or wala pa? Sino nakarinig ng Angular na rito? Angular? Okay. So, yung Angular is a um, JavaScript framework for developing front-end websites, no? So, usually, siya yung ginagamit natin for doing user interactions sa website natin. And if papasok kayo sa industry as a web developer, specifically gagamitin yung Angular, so might as well maririnig yung topic na state management. So, para just to prepare you dun sa job, na kasi usually, pag pumasok kayo sa trabaho, yan yung ma-encounter yung problem agad, state management. So, ano ba yung state management? So, let's first start kung ano state so, according to the dictionary, nag-search ako sa Wikipedia, and lumabas, um, state manage state daw is a particular condition that someone or something is in at a specific time. So, according naman sa programming term, ang state is something na-store 
stored inputs in the computer programs and usually ang tawag sa state is variables. So familiar naman tayo lahat sa variables. Okay? So um, pag sinabi nating state, ito yung um, entity sa system natin na nagche-change from time to time. So usually ang mga nagche-change sa system natin or sa program natin is what we call variables. So pagpasok niyo sa industry, as tinanong kayo nung interviewer ko na na-encounter niyo na ba yung state state or state management, ang iyasagot niyo na lang, yung state is something or an entity from the system that changes from time to time or what we call variable. So next. So let's have a brief introduction to an base state. So makikita niyo rito is we have a simple um, crude application. Um, crude application ng mga users, may first name, last name, username, and action. So pwede tayong mag-filter ng user, pwede tayong mag-edit, delete ng user. So asan dito yung state ng system natin? Okay. So yung state ng system natin is itong listahan na to. Next. So yung data na meron dito sa listahan natin, yun yung tinatawag nating state. Kasi bawat data rito is naka-assign siya sa particular variables. So sinabi ko kanina, state is equals to variables, no? So currently, ang state natin is Ayan. So ang current state natin ngayon is meron tayo sa records natin sa UI na si Jan Dalisay, Jember Panillo, Darwin Dalisay, J Lord, Bitamug and Justin Bongola. So next so, pag nag-type naman tayo ngayon ng records, mapapansin nyo, nabawasan yung records natin kasi nag-query tayo. So, tinipe dun sa read dito, sa search, tinipe natin is letter J. So, mapipilter out lahat ng users na nagsisimula sa letter J yung pangalan. So, nagbago yung state natin. Nabago siya. Nabaw nawala yung kaninang state natin before. Dati lima siya, naging apat na lang ngayon. And, next. Ayan. Isa ba? Ayan. Paano naman ngayon kung magdi-delete tayo ng isang user? So, pag nag-delete tayo ng user, click. Ayan. Na-delete siya. Lipat. Okay. Okay. Na-delete na isang user natin. Nagbago na naman state natin. Naging tatlo na lang yung users dun sa state natin. And, bakit ba mahalagang minamanage yung state? So, why do we need to manage the state pagdating kay Angular? So, kasi si Angular... Kung isa-search si Angular, pinopromote niya yung paggawa ng single-page application. So pag sinabing single-page application, hindi siya yung parang PHP na nagre-refresh yung page kasi dami ginagawa kayong action. So ano ba ibig sabihin ng being a single-page application? So a single-page application, according to Wiki again, is a web application or a website that interacts with the user by dynamically rewriting the current page rather than loading the entire page from the entire page from a server. So, ano yung maganda example ng isang single page application? For example, Facebook. Um, may nakita kayong picture na pinost, meme. So, clinic nyo yung picture na yun. Nag-reload ba yung page? Di ba? Hindi. Pag-click nyo sa picture, makikita nyo magpapapap na yung picture. Hindi magre-reload yung page. So, yun yung tinatawag natin single page application. Pag nag-interact kayo sa website at hindi nag-reload yung page, ibig sabihin, single page application siya. Or for example, nag-chat kayo. Every time ba na mag-chat-chat kayo, nagre-reload yung page? Di ba? Hindi. Automatic siya nag-update yung mga chinachat nyo. Alam nyo kung typing siya or hindi. So parang ganun yung single page application. Real-time nyo siya nagagawa without the page even reloading. So, bakit ba kailangan i-manage yung state pag single page application? So, ganun. Let's say for example, uh, meron kayong ginawang website, single page application siya. And meron yung apat na pages. So yung apat na pages na yon, syempre may mga variables yun na naka-store doon. Tinatawag natin yung variables na state pagdating sa industry, no? So bawat pages na yon, merong tigitigis ang state. So ang problema ngayon, hindi pwedeng mag-connect yung magkaibang state. Yun yung problema natin ngayon. So hindi sila pwedeng mag-connect. So ang gagawin natin is since maraming state sila, pero isa lang dapat yung source of truth. So, ang gagawin natin sa state management ni Angular is from separate state, gagawin na lang natin ng one single state and yung single state na yun is mag interact doon sa iba't ibang pages ng website natin. Okay? So, 
since medyo um, medyo off to or medyo advance so para na lang tandaan niyo na lang yung mga terms na sasabihin ko ngayon kasi later on pag nag angular kayo um ito yung mga may encounter niyo yung problems or mga terminologies na magagamit niyo in your developing angular applications no so ano ba iba't ibang approach na ginagamit in state management so when we're talking about angular meron daw tatlong approach in state management. So, sabi dito, we can use Redux using NGRX, we can use Redux using NGR, NG2 Redux, or yung pinaka-simpling approach is we can use Angular services using RxJS. So, ano ba to? Um, ano pa yung RxJS na nabanggit ko kanina? So, RxJS is um, reactive extension for JavaScript, no? Na na narinig niyo naman yung JavaScript. Familiar kayo kay JavaScript, no? Okay? So, when we're working, when we're talking about JavaScript, um, usually may ginagawa tayong asynchronous call or asynchronous JavaScript, asynchronous call. So, sino familiar dito sa Ajax? Ajax. Ajax, Ajax. Wala pa. Okay. So, later on, um, siguro may encounter niyo in your career yung tinatawag natin Ajax, no? So, si Ajax is something na um, asynchronous yung pagtawag ng method or function na kinakailangan natin for developing a website. Like, for example, Facebook ulit. Hindi siya nagre-reload. So, bakit hindi siya nagre-reload? That's, that's because we're using Ajax in Facebook, no? So, ano ba yung mga important concepts pag gumamit tayo ng RxJS kay Angular? So, Yan. Um, ang pinaka-important concept dito is um, we should use um, behavioral pattern na observable and it follows the um, design pattern of Gang of Four, no? So, tandaan nyo nalang yung mga terms. Gang of Four design patterns, no? So, pag sinerge nyo yan mamaya, may makikita yung listahan ng mga patterns ng code kasi when we're coding, hindi naman laging dapat bara-bara ka mag-code or ay bahala na or ganito yung naming ng variables ko or ganito yung structure ng code ko no so when you're developing a website or anything that, that concerns about software development is meron tayong pina-follow na pattern in coding narinig niyo na ba yung gang of four design patterns or hindi pa okay kung hindi niyo pa naririnig siya um i-search niyo yung gang of four design patterns and isa siyang mga principle kung paano ka mag-code ng mas maayos or mas maganda or mas manageable so, isa yan sa mga tip kung maibibigay sa inyo, if, you're, um, if yung career path nyo is about software development, dapat alam nyo yung gang of four design patterns. Ayan. So, next. So, um, if you're doing simple um, JavaScript site na may Ajax, meron tayong tinatawag na promise. So, hindi ito yung promise na napapako, ha. Ito yung promise na pang-asynchronous JavaScript call. And meron tayong ngayon tinatawag, pag gumamit kayo ng RxJS or Angular, may tinatawag tayong observables, no? So, makikita nyo sa parang graph na ito, or um, diagram, yung pinagkaiba ng promise tsaka observable, no? So, yung sa promise, dalawa lang siya, fail or success yung output, and pwede mo siyang i-chain using then na function. And yung observable is napakarami mong pwedeng gawin in between Pero ang ending, ano pa rin niya, result, is fail and success. So, next. So, um, I guess, hindi ko na siguro i-specify itong mga codes na to, no? Kasi parang hindi pa naman tayo ganong familiar dun sa um, observable and promise. Pero just to give you a little bit of background, kung ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng observable sa promise, when we're talking about promise, pag... Um, tinawag mo fetch na function sa JavaScript, automatic siya matawag sa network pag ginawa mo tong code na to sa taas. So, as well dun sa observable naman, automatic din siya matatawag sa network pag sinubscribe mo siya. Pero, next ko yan. Ayan. Pero, yung promise, pag hindi mo siya, pag, din, pag hindi mo siya dinat din, din matatawag pa rin siya sa network. At pag naman yung observable, hindi mo dinat subscribe, hindi siya matatawag sa network. Ayan. Um, lipat na natin. Lipat. Um, yun. So, another topic dun sa RxJS is yung tinatawag natin subject, no? Uh, okay. 
So, yun. Okay. Meron din iba't ibang types of subjects sa uh, RxJS or when you're doing Angular application, no? Ano ba iba't ibang types of subjects? Merong async subject, merong anonymous subject, may behavior subject, may replay subject, merong subject na subject lang. Ayun. Um, bakit naka-highlight yung behavior subject, no? So, nabanggit ko before, we're doing state management in Angular. So, pag nag state management tayo sa Angular, pinaka-ginagamit dito is yung behavior subject. So, yun usually ginagamit na subject when you were doing state management. So, yun. Um, next, next, next muna. Ayan. So, sa Angular, um, medyo komplika, medyo, may, ayun, yun. Medyo, ano to, um, medyo complex, pero pag sinabi natin Angular, yung mga UI natin doon, tinatawag nating components. So, let's say, for example, meron tayong website na ginawa, no? Um, kanina yung pinakita ko sa inyo, meron tayong user list no? na crude application. So, sa user list na crude application na yun, meron tayong tinatawag na user list component, may user component, and may mga iba't ibang components pa na tinatawag doon. Um, paano ba yung, paano ba yung um, workflow pag sinabi natin state management in Angular? No? So, pag sinabi natin state management in Angular, ito lang yung pinakamahalagang part na tinatawag doon, yung store. Yun yung nakita natin, um, yun nakita natin before na picture na nagko-connect lahat ng pages, siya yung store. So sa store, siya yung parang tinatawag nating um, single source of truth na kung saan doon nagko-connect lahat ng data natin doon sa state management. And kumokonek tong store na to, etong data na to na users, kumokonek siya sa iba't ibang components na nangangailangan sa kanya. So mas madaling mag-manage ng data pag isa lang yung single uh, pag isa lang yung state mo or yung variable na pinag-restoran ng data mo sa web. So uh, medyo magulo siya I, I know pero if ever na there are questions that you need to ask from me, um, feel free to ask, no? Um, if ever na may question kayo, feel free to ask if ever. Meron? Wala. Okay. Um, I guess yun yun. Um, I guess um, that concludes my topic for this day and thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you.